So you wanna save your username and password inside Git so that when you push to Bitbucket or GitHub or GitLab, you're not constantly being challenged for that username and password. You know, it's not hard to do. It's actually just one Git config setting that you have to make, setting the credential helper to store, but there's a lot of things that can get in your way and go wrong, which is why I wanna show you how to set your username and password inside Git and I also wanna show you some of the problems that you can run into as you try and get this working. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor in chief over at theserverside.com. I'm also gotta be one of the world's biggest Git advocates. And I don't wanna waste your time talking about myself. I wanna waste some time cloning Git repositories. So I've got a Git repository over here. I'm gonna copy the Git URL. I'm assuming if you're trying to set your username and password inside Git, you've cloned a repository or two in your time. I'm going to right click over here on one of my favorite folders in my file system. That's the underscore repos folder. And I'm just going to do git clone and paste in that git URL. That's going to bring that project onto my local file system. Now, let's imagine that I want to actually have git save my uh, username and password um, for this repository, but actually for every repository in my environment. Well, all you have to do is go inside of a, a terminal window. You notice I'm not even inside that project right now, but I'll probably forget to CD into it. So I'm gonna do that right now anyways. Um, but all you have to do is say, hey, Git, um, I'm gonna update your Git config file and do this globally and set up a credential helper and uh, set up a credential store for me. Store my credentials in the credential helper at the global scope level. Click enter and boom, if you've spelled everything correctly, um, Git is now ready to take your username and password. The next time you pull from a remote repository or even push to it, it'll store that permanently and use it every time on the request response. Now, by the way, global will apply to you as the user. This will get stored in the user's home directory. So if you have multiple users on your computer, each one could configure this differently. Differently. You can set it at the system level, which would apply to all users on your system. And there's also a local Git config. So if you wanted to have a separate username and password stored for each repo that you're working on, you could do that at the local level inside the repo. Okay, now in order to trigger this, I've got to try and push some code back to the server. So why don't I come over here and just create a, a new file over here, right? click uh, somewhere on here, say, let's create a new, I'm not trying to edit these files, right click, new, text document, and I'll call it golf.txt. I love to play a little bit of golf. It'll be golf too, because there's already one in there, but that doesn't matter. I'll do the requisite git add, I'll do the requisite git commit dash m, and username, password, git example, will be the git commit message. And now I'm gonna do that git push and watch what happens here. Git push and boom, all of a sudden it asks for my username. So I'm gonna say learn git, learn git fast is the username. And I'm not gonna tell you what my password is, but I'm gonna put it in there and I'm gonna click okay. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this is not going to work. And so that shouldn't surprise you. I did everything correctly. So everything was done correctly there, but I actually used the password for my GitHub account. And if you're using Git, lab, GitHub, Bitbucket, you can't use the password for the account. You have to use, if you're doing it this way, you have to use a token. So I'm actually just gonna show you how to do that very, very quickly. I'm gonna log into my GitHub account. This is the Learn Git Fast account here. And I'm gonna go into the settings. In GitHub under settings, you'll see that there's a, a developer section. So I'm gonna go developer settings, a little different in Bitbucket and GitLab and code commit. I've got the option to create a classic token or a fine grain token. I'm a classic kind of guy. So I'm gonna create the classic one. I'm gonna say generate a new classic token and I don't know, I'm gonna call it, gotta give it a name. So I'll give it a username 
password save git example. Why not? Um, I'm going to give permissions to the repo. Oh boy, what else am I going to give it permissions to? I'm feeling generous today. I'm going to give all sorts of permissions to this git token. Um, there we go. Generate the token. Got to copy that token right there. Better delete this after I've done. Everyone's going to be pushing to this repository. And now with that token, well, I can come over here and I can try once again to do that git push. Now, it's going to be Groundhog Day. It's going to ask me for my username. Learn git fast. I hope I typed that in correctly. I'm going to click OK. Now I'm going to paste in that long GitHub access token. It could be Bitbucket, could be GitLab. I'll click OK. And now everything works swimmingly. Um, it has passed my username and password to the server. Uh, and Git has now saved my username and password. Any subsequent push that I do, any subsequent pull that I do, the username and password will be passed by Git to the server automatically for me. So there you go. That's how easy it is to do. Now, I also wanted to just show you uh, some of the interesting things in here if you run into some problems. So we fixed one problem, which was the requirement of GitHub to use an access token. Um, another one is you might actually just type that in properly, right? I could have typed in my uh, username for GitHub incorrectly. I may have to go in and and change that. So let's go take a look at where all of this data is saved. Now again, I did this configuration at the system scope for git config. That's under the user's home directory. Uh, there's a git config file under the Etsy directory of the git install. And also for every project that you have, so what did I clone there? My project. There's also a config file under the uh, .git folder as well. So that is local, that is system, that is that is global, that is system. We set things up under the uh, user's account. We set them up globally. So if I come down here, open up git config, you'll end up seeing that, yeah, you know what, we've set up that credential helper to be equal to store. So you can actually see that in there. That's where that information is stored. Now, also, if I dig in here into my git credentials, uh, that file is brand new. That file was created when we asked Git to save the username and password for us. It saves it into Git credentials. Now, here's the thing. If I open up this file, you might be super disappointed. Everything is stored in plain text. So nothing here is encrypted. There's no MD5 format. There's nothing interesting um, securing any of your data. It's just right there on your file system where everybody knows that it is in plain text. So that is somewhat problematic. And again, at least this time they asked for a token for other servers. The, they're just using standard text based passwords that you choose on your own. So you know, this would just be a regular text based password. Um, and so there you go. Now, by the way, if you did have a, a problem, you know, you uh, edited your, your username incorrectly, or you wanted to update your token, update the password that Git saves for you, uh, you can just run in here and make that configuration change. Just save it, and then everything will go according to plan. So there you go. That's how easy it is to save your username and your password inside of Git so that the next time you hit Bitbucket or GitLab um, or GitHub, Git is going to pass your credentials back and forth for you. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, um, why don't you head over to theserverside.com. Uh, my name's Cameron McKenzie. I don't know if I introduced myself. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. Um, and we've got lots of great tutorials on Git, Bitbucket, uh, Code Deploy, GitHub. We've got lots of great tutorials on various DevOps tools and continuous integration tools. We've got lots of great tutorials on Scrum and Agile. So head over there. There's a lot going on. Uh, if you're interested in my personal antics, I'm on Twitter at Cameron MCNZ. And I would love it if you shared this on Twitter and tag me on the share. I love to hear from people and uh, I love to know what people think of my videos as long as it's positive. Um, also, uh, I'm, I'm doing a lot of work in the uh, artificial intelligence machine learning space. Um, so I've got a newsletter that well, 
it talks about stuff that's going on with Git and it links to a few of my tutorials, but it also covers a lot of stuff that's happening with Mojo, uh, new programming language that's being designed by modular AI. Uh, it's poised to replace Python. Um, and if you're into the AI ML space or you want to stay on top of what's going in the world, going on in the world of software development, as I said, I cover that all in the newsletter. So please sign up for it. Um, I guess that is about it. Um, you're probably watching this on YouTube. So I guess the final thing that I would ask is, why don't you subscribe on the YouTube?